Hey guys, welcome back to, I guess this is part 11 of my Combine series now. Um, first thing first, I'm going to start off with, there's no longer going to be any more uh, two-parters because I was actually able to, um, since, I've, since I made a couple videos by now, I've actually been able to adjust my YouTube account, so I'll be able to go ahead and make a longer video, so now it's not going to be any more two-part 15-minute videos. I can go ahead and just make them as long as I want, up to 11 hours, so I'm just going to go ahead and... I'll be able to talk as long as I want to without worrying about any time restrictions. So hopefully the flow of the videos is going to be a little different from here on out. Also, um, forgive me if I'm going to be talking a little soft this week because I'm coming down with a cold or laryngitis or something. So my throat's really, really hurting from talking right now. So um, I actually uh, got sent home from work because my boss took a look at me and said, go home, Amanda. So um, here I am. I'm sitting here at home now really try not to talk but I figure hey today's Saturday I gotta get this video up regardless so um, again if I'm sounding kind of froggy froggish talking soft I'll, I'm gonna do my best to talk here but um, like I said curse to talk so I'll try to get my point across as quick as I can here um, anyway last week <coughs> last week um, I was talking a bit about Joe and um, I do know I got a little bit emotional in, in a 10B there for obvious reasons. I'm, as a result of me getting all emotional, my, my mind did kind of go blank. So there's a few things that I left out last week that I did mean to address this week. So um, I'll go ahead and um, just uh, continue talking about Joe this week as well. Um, <coughs> excuse me, guys. Um, I did, did warn you about that. So anyway, um, I was going to talk a little bit more about Joe. Um, there was one thing I, well, um, the day that Joe committed suicide, I told Joe, me and Justin, we went over to NDK anyway, because we already had everything paid for, and, um, when we got to the hotel to check in, there was a computer in the lobby, and I was actually, I actually managed to use that computer to, uh, log onto my MySpace account, and, um, just write a full account of the events of the day because I wanted to get it down while it was still fresh in my head and I wanted people to know as as soon as possible about what happened and also um the next day uh, there was this uh, this combine forum I used to post on I don't post on anymore but is one I used to post on just to contribute a few of my thoughts and everything and I let the people know there about what happened with Joe because I didn't want any uh conspiracy theories or rumors getting started. I just wanted, wanted it I just wanted the truth to come out straight away just to try to prevent any of that from happening and did that help? Not really because um I know I did not address this in my last video but um the day of Joe's funeral was actually the day that the Columbine Memorial in uh Clement Park got do got a uh, dedicated and so some people saw that as kind of being a little more than coincidental. And, um, I, after the funeral, I had thought about going over there to the de dedication, but I figured I was already an emotional wreck from the funeral, so I elected to skip the dedication instead, because, like I said, I was an emotional wreck, so I, I, I didn't think it would do me any good, so I went ahead and skipped, and I was able to visit a couple times later on, but dedication just would have been too much for one day, I think, so, um. So was that, and, um, at, right, right after NDK, I was supposed to, uh, go visit a friend down in Florida for a couple of weeks, but I ended up, of course, after what happened with Joe, I, I canceled that trip, and since I already had the days blocked off from working anyway, I spent the next, those next few weeks, uh, just, um, at, at Justin's house, just, uh, trying to deal with things my own way, and, um, There were some details about his suicide that I neglected to mention in the in last week's video. Um, I did mention that I, Grandma Donna was the first one to find him, and Uncle Robbie came in right behind her, saw him as well, and um, well, let me see if you can hear this really quick here. I'm gonna let this play for a few seconds, see if you can recognize it. Oh, 
keep listening. If you don't hear it, if you don't recognize it by now, this is a Phil Collins song in the air tonight. Um, when Grandma Donna and Uncle Robbie found Joe, this had been playing on the computer loudly, on repeat. And um, I mentioned before that Joe was a Phil Collins fan. And the reason I believe that Joe chose this song to do it to is that uh, because Phil Collins had recorded this song when he was in the middle of a divorce. And as I mentioned, um, Joe was in the middle of a divorce himself, so I think he thought this song would be appropriate to do it to. And when he was found, he was also holding this, he, in his hands, he was clutching this picture of him and Laura um, at Niagara Falls. It's even, even, even in death, he was still he was holding on this, this picture frame with him and Laura in there. And then... Um, Something that I, I, well, I had still questions at, about his death later on, so a few months after his suicide, I went over to the shop to just get some of my own questions answered, and um, Uncle Robbie was there, and um, I, I asked him to walk me through it, so he showed me exactly where Joe did it. There's this uh, doorway between the work area of the shop and one of the offices, there's this two by four rafter above the door. And he'd um he'd loop this extension cord around this two by four rafter. Got on his knees or something on a, on a rolling chair, stuck his head in this loop in the extension cord, leaned forward, strangled himself until he passed out. And then as he passed out, this chair rolled out from underneath him, so Typically speaking, his feet were touching the ground, but because he was unconscious, he couldn't support himself to get back up, so he he strangled to death. And um, the initial estimate was that he'd done it at 3 in the morning, but um, based on a few different factors, I guess. But, um, but um, the, it was noted by uh, my relative that the last thing that anything happened, well, the last thing done on the computer, the work computer that he, last evening was a, he'd backed up the system at 10.30, so it's entirely possible he did it right after he backed up the computer, so he could have been there for as long as eight hours before he got found, but in the original estimate was at 3 a.m., so that would have been four hours, but still, no matter when he did it, it still would have been too late by the time kind of Donna and Robbie found him, so... This is, this is weird to listen to this song as I'm discussing this right now because I looked at his death certificate sh shortly after he died and it said it would have taken several minutes for him to die so you can imagine from when he started the song, this song to the end of the song he probably started and passed out and was gone by the end of this song so just imagine listening to this song with me here as I'm talking here imagining him doing this it's really hard. <laughs> um, it was hard for me to listen to the song for a, a while after after Joe died, but um, but unlike the situation with One Sweet Day with Jessica, um, I was familiar with this song, so it hasn't been quite as much of a struggle to listen to it as it has been to listen to One Sweet Day. So um, so I'm able to I am able to listen to this song, although it's kind of hard for me to. Pretend it doesn't bug me because it just makes me think about Joe. <coughs> it's just. It's just messed up. And the fact that Grandma Donna. Well, Grandma Donna, she'd. Well, Grandma Donna, she just battled cancer the year before and lost Grandpa and everything, so she was pro she, so. And of course, she taken over the business from, from Grandpa. So, um, I imagine she was probably under she was probably, still in poor health at that time, and just I imagine finding Joe like that must have been, <laughs> I can't even imagine what it was like. But um, I never. I never got the courage to ask her because it just didn't seem appropriate. I mean, I, I was able to ask Uncle Robbie, but I never was able to ask Grandma Donna because I, I didn't know how she'd react, so I, I never, I never asked her. 
And, um, well, enough of that for now. Let me, um, I took the liberty of getting out, digging out my freshman yearbook from Columbine today. Uh, this is it right here. If you can see the cover there. This is the 1997-98 yearbook when Joe was a senior. Let me go ahead and uh, show you his picture here really quick. Dig through here. Uh, senior pictures. Here we go. All right, here's Joe. Here's Joe here. Let me, hold on. He is out here. There he is, here we go. The long brown hair and the blue blouse. That's him right there, that's Joe. Back when he was all of 17 years old in 1997 when that picture got taken. Well, the thing with the guys in my family, they kind of have a Samson complex with their hair. So dad grew his out. Never cut it, and a Joe grew his long as well, and uh, my little brother, he grew his out as well. But when he was in kindergarten, he got teased for a. He got teased by the kids for looking like a girl, and so and in addition to that, he had this. Uh, I think I think it's called trichotillomania, where he would play with his hair when he'd get anxious. So he so mom ended up cutting his hair short and keeping it short, so he wouldn't be able to twirl his hair thing because. Sometimes Josh would get bald spots in the back of his head from, from messing with it so much, but um, he did he he did grow out of that, and of course now um, my little brother Josh now he has long hair as well, so um, but yeah um, the long hair thing um, he had it for most of his life, and then in two thousand four he decided to just start over so he he shaved himself he shaved his head bald which surprised the heck out of me because i could still remember this one time where um it, where uh when he was still in high school he'd wanted to dye his his long hair blue like uh, his favorite video game character magus from chrono trigger and mom threatened to shave his head if he ever did that actually did that so the fact that he actually did go ahead and do that in 2004 just struck me as something <laughs> some kind of irony there and um couple years later he did, he did start eventually did start growing it out again and at the time of the Weird Al concert that I mentioned earlier that we went to two weeks before he died he um it was finally long enough that he was just barely able to tie it back into a tiny tiny ponytail and he he was all proud of himself for that and I thought that I thought it was cute because like, I wanted to see him grow out his hair again but um unfortunately I never I never got to see him grow it out again so um there's that, and then um, something else about this uh, freshman year book here. I'm gonna. I did have, even though he's my brother, I still had Joe sign my freshman year book, and of course he took up a whole page for himself because that's just how he was. Let me uh, dig that out here. Do, 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 do. This one might be in the front as well. Let me see. Oh, come on now. I know it's here. Maybe it's in the back after all. Okay. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Oh, I should have had the page saved. There it is. Okay. I'm going to read off what he said in my freshman year book here. He said, and I quote, Well, I walked up, I walked up to him in the cafeteria one day and had him sign the yearbook. So he just wrote this as he was sitting there in the cafeteria with his, with his friends, but he was still being. Typical Joe here, so I'll go ahead and read this off for you. Um, it says, They say you shouldn't be like me. I say too bad. I will make you more like me. Too bad for Columbine. Ha 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 ha. Feel the darkness. Embrace the darkness. Sleep uh, in the darkness. Yeah, that's it. That's the ticket. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Lord Vegas. Because, um, like I said before, um, a Magus from Chrono Trigger, he's the major villain in that video game, and, um, Joe, he was Joe's favorite character of all time, so even online, uh, Joe would uh, use the handle name uh, Lord Mega Samuel to post on online discussion boards for his uh, whole uh, One World Unity thing and for other stuff as well. So let me go ahead and show you this. This thing he wrote here. I have a copy of this posted on my MySpace page as well. So I don't post to anymore, but I still have it active, still have it up. So, I'm going to show you this here. 
the glare might be a little much. Let me see if I can help you look at that there. See Lord Magus, Drew. So there is Joe's writing in my yearbook there. I guess the whole too bad for Columbine thing might strike people as being a little bit weird considering what happened the next year. But of course at the time, who is anybody to know that that was going to happen? So cops never asked to look at my yearbook or anything. So they just left it at that pretty much. And um, also, like I mentioned before, Joe pretty much had all his clothes and stuff in his car. He was living out of his car pretty much when he was uh, staying with Mom and us. Well, after he got kicked out. So um, after he passed away, uh, Mom did go through his clothes and she let me and my brother pick something of his that we wanted to keep. So um, I do have one of Joe's shirts here. I have not worn it myself because it is kind of big on me, but um, I always do have it sitting in my my closet. So let me go ahead and dig this out here. This is a Joe, Joe's Metallica shirt. He wore this one all the time, and despite him wearing it all the time, it is still in actually in really really good condition. Let me show you the back here. This is actually a uh, apparently a uh, tour shirt from their 1998 tour. And so you can see that all the tour dates there and um Metallica was also in town um in 2000 for their summer san sanitarium tour and it was apparently their first uh concert well uh James Hadfield the singer he'd uh I guess he'd uh broken his arm skateboarding or something and so um the his uh, show in Denver for this 2000 summer sanitarium tour was actually his first show back since he'd broken his arm or something and I I do believe Joe went to that but I can't uh yeah I'm pretty sure he went to that but I don't have any shirts from that tour I always have his uh one from the 98 tour here and uh, that one of my regrets is uh yeah I wish I wish we would have been closer in our in his last few years but he had to, he had a wife he had its two kids then and so he he had to focus on them. So I I do regret not. I regret not spending more time with him. I wish that he would have been brave enough to come to me with whatever was bothering him with dealing with the divorce and everything. Maybe he just didn't feel like that. Maybe he just didn't want to burden anybody. I I really don't know. Um, all I can do is just guess at how he felt now because it, it's been my guilt really. So, um, even even nowadays online, I still have people commenting to me as soon as they realize who I am. They comment to me about the conspiracy theories about about him and his relationship with the shooting and everything. And a lot of them are still convinced that Joe has something to do with the shooting because supposedly Eric and Dylan yelled, "Hey Joe, I got three of them" or something like that. And as I mentioned before, in part, I believe it was part four, I called home when I, after the shooting, and Joe was at home. He'd been, ma he'd been making lunch when I called, when I called home, so, I was obviously, when, obviously didn't have anything to, to do with the shooting at all, and it just makes me mad that people are still insistent on this 15 years later, and that Joe can't even defend himself, so, that's part of why I'm uh, actually making these videos, is because, um, like I said, Joe can't defend himself anymore, and if he can't do it, somebody has to. And so me, as his little sister, I am taking on that duty to defend my brother. And so anyone who still th who's watching the videos and still thinks that Joe has something to do with it, you can go. I'm gonna be too polite to say what I'm gonna what I want to say, but if you, I think you can probably figure it out. Um. Sorry, guy. My voice is getting to me today. Um, I'm sure there's probably th other things I want to say that I'm probably blanking on again because it's a sen because it is still a sensitive topic with me. But um, anyway, um, yeah, um, oh yeah, um, I had this one friend on MySpace. I haven't talked with her in a long time, but um. 
she got questions from somebody interested in buying Joe's trench coat. And I had already heard from mom before that she would never ever sell his trench coat. Mom still, mom's the one who still has his trench coat. So if anybody's wondering what happened to that, mom has it. And uh, let me back, let me get back on track here. I had this friend who said she'd been asked questions about what happened to the trench coat, and that this one guy who was in contact with her was willing to pay ten thousand dollars for it. And I just kind of smiled at myself and said, "No, I never passed along the offer to mom uh, because." She'd already made it very clear that she wasn't going to let go of his trench coat for any kind of money because we all knew somebody would probably try to make it, whoever bought it would probably try to make it as part of their murderabilia collection even though he nothing, had nothing to do with the shooting. So, so mom will never let that trench coat go. I Last time I saw it was probably in 2007. I honestly couldn't tell you for sure. It's not something I've thought about. And, um, also, uh, oh yeah, um, Uh, no pop that here. Sorry. Okay. Um. Yeah. Um. After Joe passed away, there's the matter of uh, what to do with his uh car. He had this uh some 1990 Mercedes, I think. I don't remember what year it was, but it was newer than mine. And um. So me and Justin, we tried to sell it for a little bit, but we we didn't get make any headway there. And um, finally, Mom was able to sell it herself. And um. As well, keepsake for myself. I uh, decided to keep the license plate off of the car. Um, it's actually a Colorado uh, United States Air Force plate, which um, Joe actually got on his car in tribute to Dad, who used to be in the Air Force. He was only for two years, but he was still in the Air Force. But it was it was Joe's little personal tribute to him. So, so yeah. After after Joe after we after Mom sold Joe's car, I went ahead and I I took the license plate. Um, I probably should have brought that in here for this video here, but I just not thought about it. So maybe maybe I'll show it on my next video. I don't know. But yeah, it's, it's, it is in the other room. I do still have that license plate here. Uh, the expiration date is November 2007. Um, <sighs> this is exhausting to talk about, really. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. Like I said, I'm, I'm sick right now. I'm trying to keep all my thoughts straight here about Joe here um yeah I'm also after he passed away I remember asking Laura if I could have remember the Sailor Moon art books that I mentioned last week well um after Joe passed away I'd I'd asked Laura if I could have them although I told her I'd also understand if she wanted Aaliyah to, my niece to have them because she was into Sailor Moon as well, and she was always making talk about how she wanted to grow out her hair to be down to her ankles like Sailor Moon's was. And then Laura said, no, those were going to be Aaliyah's. And I said, that's fine, I understand. So so as far as I know, uh, my niece has those, has, still has those art books. And I will, I will let her keep them, of course. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not for me to decide what she, what she does with them, because... That's part of what makes me mad to this day because, um, even seven years later, I'm just, uh, it just makes me mad that he did what he did because he knew his daughter worshipped him so much. She worshipped him, she worshipped the ground he walked on. I mean, she'd walk up to him and bow down and she say, you are my master, just like that. I'd be, and I'd, I asked, I asked Joe, did you teach her that? And he'd, he'd, he'd be like, nope, she did come up with that all on her own, so... So she literally worshipped her dad so much. She loved him so much, and and it just it makes me so sad that now it's it's seven years on, and my niece was not quite seven when this all happened. So just knowing that she's spent half of her life without her dad there, it just makes me sad. And the fact that my nephew, he was only a year old when it happened, so he has no memories of his dad. All he knows is is stories from what Laura and my niece tell him and, and pictures of him so he has no actual memory of him and that that just that makes me so sad as well just knowing that that he left them that he did this knowing that he was gonna be hurting his own kids so much <sighs> and remember how I said that when I was younger I when 
my niece was younger, I would take her out and people would think that we were mother and daughter because um, we would look so much alike. Well, as my niece has gotten older, um, she's actually the spitting image of her dad. I mean, it's, it's uncanny. It's like, if you imagine my brother as a girl, it's pretty close to what my niece looks like now. And, um, and, uh, my nephew, as he's grown up, he's, um, he looks more like uh, his mom. He looks more like Laura, but, um, I think I'll, I think for their privacy's sake, I'll go ahead and just, um, not talk anymore about my niece and nephew because I know they're getting to the age where they're going to start Googling stuff out. Maybe me, maybe their dad, so I don't want to, I don't want them to think that I'm blabbing about them so much. That's why I've kept details about them to, to a minimum, so, um, so yeah, um, I'll go ahead and just leave off regarding them. I'll, I'll leave off right there. Um, let me think. Is there anything else I want to say? Probably, but... Oh, yeah. <laughs> also, when, uh, this is one thing I just remembered here, um, when Joe was a teenager, still, was a teenager, early 20s, um, well, there's the, there's this um, old theater in uh, Denver called the Esquire, and um, at least back then, I don't know if they still do, still do it now, but every Saturday back then they'd have showings of uh, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and, um, and so he and Laura, before they had the kids, they'd go over there every Saturday and, and watch Rocky Horror, and um, the thing they did with the first timers there was that they they'd paint a, a big, big black V on their forehead for a virgin for that being their first time being there watching Rocky, Rocky Horror and Joe would always threaten to take me there to have a the black V painted on my forehead to have make me watch Rocky Horror and um I guess after he had kids he kind of blew that off so he never did take me to watch Rocky Horror at the Esquire and I still actually well. Even though I get some of the Rocky Horror jokes, I, um, actually still have not seen Rocky Horror, so, um, that might surprise a few people, but, uh, yeah, I might need to get on that at some point, so, um, yeah, I just want to leave this video off with a, a good memory of Joe, so there you have it, he was also a big Rocky Horror fan, and, um, also, um, <coughs> I remember in 94, um, he, he got this, uh, Tales from the Crypt, a Crypt Keeper, Crypt Keeper Christmas CD for Christmas with the Crypt Keeper singing his own special versions of the Christmas songs. And so we, we would listen to that every year when we were, when we were still kids in the 90s. We'd crack up with these songs every time. And I only recently took another listen to these songs. I think it was probably last year I finally listened to the songs again for the first time in forever. And, I remember it's like, oh geez, these songs were so were so awesome back in the day. Now they're just kind of cringeworthy, cheesy. But um, I guess you would have had to have had, I guess you would have had to have been a kid in the '90s to really appreciate the humor in the in that Tales from the Crypt, the Crypt Keeper Christmas CD. So I, don't, I don't, maybe it's just one of those things, and maybe it's awesome when you're a kid, and then you're older, look back on it, and say, oh my God, what was I thinking? Maybe it's something like that. But um. Anyway, I'll go, like I said before, I'll go and, I wanted to leave off this, this video with a good memory of Joe, so I'll go ahead and stop here for today, um, so yeah, next week, uh, I don't know what I should talk about, maybe I'll talk about dad, all the health stuff that went on with him, maybe I'll talk about all my PTSD stuff, so if, if you, I really don't know what I want to talk about next week yet, so if you want me to address a particular topic, you can go ahead and comment in the comments right below there, and I will take a look and see um, what I will work on for next week. So once again, guys, I do want to thank you for watching today. I will see you next week. Bye-bye.